Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this video on forecasting using the Auto Arima package in R. So we're going to use R today and in particular we're going to delve on the autoregressive integrated moving average framework to try and forecast uh, monthly inflation in the Philippines. So uh, before we get started, uh, we need to make sure first that you have the packages necessary to be able to conduct the the ARIMA modeling and the forecasting that we're going to do. So please ensure that you have uh, the tidyverse package, so that's for ggplot, and the t-series package and the forecast uh, package uh, installed, so that we'll be able to run the commands uh, to follow. So once you install all of those, okay, uh, we need to, of course, call these packages. So uh, let's call them, so library uh, tidyverse. Oops, verse. So there, library uh, forecast. Okay, and then last library uh, T series. Okay, there we go. So, first step, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the data set. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, we're just gonna use, uh, so let's create an object, let's name it inflation, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna read a CSV file, okay? So I have inflation data stored in that CSV file and uh, read.csv, okay? Uh, File.choose. Okay, so the file is in my desktop, so just select the file wherever it is. So inflation.csv, and I open, and you should see that uh, the inflation data should show up there. Um, if you type this command class okay, of inflation, uh, it shows us that uh, the inflation that we have is uh, a data frame. Okay, so it is a type of uh, storage method, uh, and it looks something like that. Okay, but what we want to do is we want to transform Okay, we want to transform uh, this object in such a manner that we're dealing with a time series. So we're going to, um, a time series sort of object so that we can use the ARIMA modeling and uh, further regressions on it. So we can do that by transforming uh, the variable that is here, which is rate, uh, into its own time series object. And we do that using this command. So rate, okay, so let's name the object rate. And we're going to use the ts command, okay? And then from inflation, so remember we saved it as inflation. From inflation, we want to get this variable rate here, okay? We want to get the variable rate. And then uh, note the first data point I have there starts at uh, 1958, so that's the year. And then this monthly, so it starts at January 1958, so the uh, above it. Uh, you can see some guides. And since this is monthly data, the frequency of the data is uh, 12 because there are 12 months in one year. And then, and then if we do that, we should see uh, a new um, value here, which is rate, which is our time series, which is uh, a series uh, containing values for monthly inflation rate from January 1958 until the end of 2019. So for this exercise, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, we're going to try and forecast uh, the inflation rate the next period, which is which is January 2020. So know that typically when uh, people are forecasting inflation, we forecast them one period or two periods ahead, okay, for the normal uh, forecast. And uh, one of the most powerful models to be able to forecast um, in short term uh, in a short term time span is really the Arena model. So uh, first, okay, let's try and get a sense for the data. So try to graph data. So first, let's try to graph the data that we have. Okay, and we start with, uh, so we can do that using an auto plot command. So auto plot. So we want to plot uh, the object rate or variable rate. Then uh, just let's give it a title. Uh, so let's just call it uh, inflation rate. Inflation rate, uh, and then let's put a label on the y-axis uh, being inflation. Okay, and let's see how that goes. 
Oh, while oh sorry, Y lab. My apologies. Okay, and you should see the inflation rate here. So this is the inflation rate of the country, and uh, notice that in this period it was extremely high. Uh, this period was high probably due to the recently passed tax reform law. So just by uh, smelling the graph, so to speak, you can get a lot of uh, things already in place. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use, okay, we're going to use uh, the ARIMA model. Okay, so we're now going to build our model. Okay, and what it does is, uh, we know that the ARIMA model is partly autoregressive, so that's the AR part, meaning it's uh, we are trying to explain future values of, in this case, inflation using its past values. And it also has the MA part, in which we're using um, a white noise error term, past values of a white noise error term, to explain future values of white team. When we combine them together, we get the ARMA model. So... But we, we still have an I there because it's called ARIMA, right? So we have the I part, which is which stands for integrated, which means that oftentimes uh, the series that we have is not necessarily a stationary series. So what we do is in order for a series that's non-stationary to become stationary, we can implement a process called differencing. And... Um, we don't really need to know the nitty-gritty of that that much because in the auto ARIMA command, it does it, it detects non-stationarity automatically and solves for that. Moreover, another key thing about modeling is knowing the number of lags to include. So how many autoregressive lags will you include? How many moving average lags will you include? Well, uh, you use a couple of indicators such as the Akaike information criterion, squash Bayesian information criterion, and so on. But again, the auto ARIMA command already factors in and it goes through a lot of different models to find the best one for your particular series. So uh, let's fit our model now. So let's call it fit underscore ARIMA. Okay. And we're going to have auto dot arima so that's the command auto arima and what we're gonna do is this is rate okay auto arima of rate and then uh we will set uh seasonal okay seasonal equals true now there's a variant okay there's a variant of the arima model called the sarima model and the s stands for seasonal so what we can do is apart from including autoregressive lags and moving average lags, we can also include seasonal autoregressive lags uh, and seasonal uh, autoregressive moving average lags. So what does that mean? So think about like, for example, uh, sales of a firm. Typically, you would see that fourth quarter sales during the Christmas period will, uh, will probably be higher. So generally, we can see some seasonality in the way that sales data for some firms work. So say we wanted to forecast sales data, we would try to incorporate some seasonality in the model. And we can do that in the seasonal autoregressive integrated moving average model. So again, the fit underscore uh, the auto arima command uh, simplifies that for us. It will automatically do that. And... Uh, and find the best model there is. So uh, let's run this command, okay? So we run the command there and we get the fit here. So notice there's a new object in our environment. Then uh, let's just print the summary of it. So print, okay, print summary, okay, of fit underscore ar arima, okay? And this is generally the result of the arima regression that we have here. Okay, so this is the result. And then if you notice, um, the model that it chose, okay, supposedly the best model is ARIMA, uh, or rather SARIMA rather, uh, 112001. So meaning the model that it thought was the best is or contains um, one uh, autoregressive lag, that's this one. Uh, it differenced it, so it thought that inflation was not stationary, which by looking at it doesn't look that stationary. So it differenced it to make it stationary. And it included two uh, moving average lags. Okay, Then it also added one seasonal moving average lag because it thought that it was probably the best uh, model for that. Okay, so we have this one there. Okay, so uh, 
what we can do is to see the fit of the model, we can check the residuals of it. So there's a command called check residuals of fit underscore arima. Okay, and we get a graph here. So notice if the filtering process was correct, the residual should be approximately white noise. And you can see that yeah, uh, it, it somewhat doesn't have a structure. As you can see, a white noise process is any process with no discernible structure. And by the looks of it, it, uh, it arguably doesn't have that much of a, uh, a pattern. And uh, the mean of it is zero, right? So the mean, so it centers around zero, okay? And in an ideal case, there wouldn't be any lags, okay, that exceed uh, this confidence interval here for the autocorrelation function. But in here, um, there are still lags that exceed that. So it's uh, a little bit of a boo-boo on that point, but um, it, it can get by. It's not the worst model that we've had. Okay, so, so let's say this model passes. We can now start to forecast. Okay, so and we forecast in this way. So let's name our forecast. So say F cast. Uh, so say that's our forecast. And the uh, command to forecast is forecast. So we're creating an object called F cast using the forecast command. And we're going to forecast okay, using our uh, built, uh, the model that we just built, which is fit underscore rima. And we want to forecast, so H is, it specifies to R, how many periods ahead do you want to forecast? So say in this case, let's forecast one period ahead. We only want to know January's inflation. Of course, you can change it to two, three, four, five, six, whatever, so it can forecast longer and longer. But as I've said in the earlier videos, um, when you forecast into higher and uh, longer and longer periods ahead from where you are, the quality of the forecast generally degrades. So let's forecast one period ahead. Okay. And then let's type auto plot. Okay. Auto plot. Uh, let's just create that function. And then let's plot our forecast. Okay. Sorry. A forecast. Let's plot that. And you can see that in this graph, it already plotted our forecasted value. But yeah, it's kind of hard to read from that graph. So let's uh, print a summary of our forecast, which should be very brief. And it thinks that, so note here, look, January 2020 forecast is expected to be 3.02%. And in fact, okay, so if you go to the website, um, the PSA website, inflation during January was 2.9%. So we were just 0.1% uh, from the target. So very close. Uh, so a little bit more modeling probably to filter out those uh, errors that we saw here. And maybe we could have gotten closer to the 2.9. Uh, and that's uh, a simple video on how to forecast using R in the auto arima 